Okay, so um, a lot of people keep asking, like, what's the metaverse, right? And uh, I, to be honest with you, I, I, I read a lot of articles, and I was trying to explain to people, but it seems like everyone has different, um, you know, uh, everyone has different way or interpretations of uh, how 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 they say uh, how they explain metaverse but i really like the economist this uh video maybe that's kind of watch jump around watch a little bit i really like their explanation and actually i even write notes about it let me uh, kind of summarize what's this video about and uh, uh maybe we can you know jump jump watching a little bit and uh, we can you know open to discuss um, what's your thoughts about uh, the metaverse, right? So let me summarize it. Uh, it all starts with video games, right? We all know that, you know, computer really becomes like a really powerful, um, a lot of, a, a lot of um, developers, they start creating some small games, right? In the early stage and uh, software and hardware simulation. So start with, you know, uh, the early stage of uh, computers start, being invented and uh, some people start creating some very simple games. And later on, uh, you know, we have like a 3D graphic technology and those kind of transform the, the games and simulations, right? Uh, and we all know that a lot of AAA games, they have a really good physics uh, simulations, which kind of turn to the, um, you know, uh, digital twins, right? Because you see like if the 3D virtual revival environment can simulate or using using AI to simulate the real world uh, physics, then, you know, actually it can pair up uh, with the, the real world, right? So these types of technology we can all see in AAA games. And then later on um, in this video, it will talk about Disney. Disney has a big movie called The Mandalorian. Mandalorians, yeah, uh, something very similar to Star Wars uh, TV shows. However, they use kind of like a, a simulation wall, right? Instead of creating like a have a team of staff creating uh, a set, right? Movie set or TV set, they use, uh, you know, the, the kind of like a, a, a circular wall and then put, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of, Kind of like a virtual wall and the versus the the physical um, stuff and kind of um, create uh, kind of a, a really good uh, background for the the TV shows. So they start producing the high quality of films, making all the TV series becomes like a high quality films just by creating like a simulation walls for the sci-fi movies. So uh, that's kind of built up the, the background of kind of like metaverse. And when people think about metaverse, people think about games or, you know, talking with people like social, right? But uh, it all talks about, uh, you know, in the future, uh, a lot of professionals, uh, for uh, they find, uh, you know, um, this technology is really good for, for example, like uh, medical surgery, and also, you know, uh, how people develop things and visualize um, uh, something, even like a warehouse retail store, right? Or uh, how to manage uh, inventories, for example, in Walmart or in Amazon, um, it can kind of pair up with AI and uh, do the digital twins and, you know, uh, kind of train the virtual robot to, to carry on different products and kind of, um, kind of vision how um, things will do just by computer simulation uh, to the real world. So um, it's kind of like a, a, a vision thing. Also, it can also uh, predict the, um, you know, fire, uh, wild, wildfire, right? Um, so uh, there's another examples where uh, there's a, a, a 
uh, flight or airplane, it carries a lot of sensors uh, when the plane fly uh, across the mountains and it will start scanning and collecting all the data for the trees, for everything. And later on, it will create a digital twins and doing some simulations and uh, uh, people can predict which area will have prone to you know, become the fire zone uh, in what season and what date. So it's very convenient. And at the end, it talks about air glass. Air glass will be the future of kind of like we call the metaverse, more like digital world uh, blend with the, the real world. Why? Because AR, it's not like entirely black out of you know your entire view. It still has the, the real world and it's kind of enhanced the, the real world. So these types of things will kind of like reigning force. And uh, uh, what's real metaverse? It's still like, you know, everyone has different definitions, every, you know, companies or uh, everyone, but uh, we kind of have the same agreement, which we will meet people or we will do things and with the uh, virtual data's help and we will achieve some certain goals and uh, we can, you know, uh, enhance our life and something that the real world cannot achieve then can be achieved in kind of you know metaverse so yeah so I think uh, this videos explain really well about what's the metaverse and it's kind of open-ended and it doesn't have like some really specific um, limitations so I really like it so that's kind of watch you know jump watch and see and uh, hopefully we can speed up and later on we can have discussion. I think this one is the meat. I kind of um, take a look at this entire week's news and it's usually like, you know, Apple's uh, AR glass will first palm like a few years later for some reason. And we all know that Apple was trying to launch, is trying to launch their AR glass and it's kind of forever. So. It's not a news anymore. So yeah, so let's take a look of how the economist uh, kind of summarize. And it's really, really good. Yeah, let's take a look. License. Can you hear the sound of the video? Yeah, just give me- Yeah, a... yeah we can hear Yeah, it. cool. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah perfect. Okay. Yeah. This perfect. world is coming and you've probably heard of it. It's called- The Metaverse. The Metaverse would allow that virtual space to operate like the real world does for everyone at the same time with infinite memory and history. But if you thought the metaverse was all about gaming, gigs, and virtual meetings, think again. It could transform numerous aspects of our daily lives. The heat is unbelievable. From firefighting and filmmaking. We're going to see people spending more time in immersive experiences. To manufacturing and medicine. Using augmented reality is an opportunity for us to, to do things better. A whole new world is emerging, and with it, multi-trillion dollar opportunities. You think the web transformed our lives? <laughs> the 3D web is going to do much more. One of the recent innovations that we've created at ILM uh, is what we call StageCraft, the StageCraft LED wall, which is this immersive environment which filmmakers can use to create their productions. Industrial Light and Magic is a groundbreaking visual effects company famous for recent shows like Disney's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Where is he? In the past, it would have taken an army of set designers months to build a set like this. Now, with ILM's StageCraft technology, sets can be designed virtually, revolutionizing the production process. StageCraft is ILM's virtual production toolkit, and it's really an end-to-end -end solution. So what you see on that LED wall is actually what goes straight into the show. This is the technology which underpins the metaverse, the ability to conjure up realistic, computer-generated worlds in real time. But what exactly is the metaverse? 
Ask a lot of people and some might tell you it's about NFTs. Or donning a VR headset and jumping into an online world like the game Second Life. But for companies and professionals working in the field, the metaverse is something far more significant. Matthew Ball is a leading authority on the metaverse. For some, it is a future state of today's internet, but which operates in a more decentralized fashion. But for most, especially those which operate big tech today, they imagine it as a parallel plane of existence, a 3D virtual simulacra of the Earth, but with many fictional elements, allowing us to do what is not possible. The term metaverse was first coined in Neil Stevenson's 1992 novel, Snow Crash. But the metaverse has its roots in the early gaming industry of the 1970s. A player can improve the machine's ability by revising its program. For decades, the video game industry has been developing software and hardware to create simulations. Initially, these were very limited. These experiences began with multi-user shared hallucinations, with your own rules for real-time collaboration with others to choose and tell your own story. But of course, it unfolded purely in text, largely without color. In the decades that followed, we saw persistent improvements in the visual fidelity and the number of people who engaged in this world their cultural impact, as well as their economic value. The advent of 3D graphics technology transformed video games and fueled the growth of the gaming industry. Worth $13 billion in 1997, this rose to $214 billion in 2021. Today, this technology has come of age. Graphics software can now create a simulated world's rules, logic, and physics. It's already opening up new frontiers for creativity in the film and television industry. Thank you, and background action. I'm able to put actors and cameras in this environment and we can see it and play in it and live in it. ILM's film set was originally powered by Unreal a 3D computer graphics engine built by Epic Games, one of the world's largest game makers. ILM has since developed its own real-time cinematic render engine called Helios, and some of the biggest names in the movie business are buying into it. We could actually get in-camera finished visual effects that would really help us with the quick turnaround that television requires. So the first time we got to create and use stagecraft was for Jon Favreau's show, The Mandalorian. And he really wanted to advance the state of the art. Um, even though it was going to be a TV show, he wanted it to feel like the movies. This new technology can also make the business of film production more efficient. We've done an analysis, and about half the shots we shoot, they just go straight into the show. Now, the other half, sometimes they need touch-ups or fixes, so half the work still needs to be done in post. But when you're talking about thousands of shots, that can be a, a pretty significant streamlining and reduction in that post-production process. It's not just Hollywood. The vast opportunities emerging with metaverse technologies are drawing the interest of some of the world's biggest companies. Facebook is so excited, it's changed its name. Our company is now Meta. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Hi, Mark. And Meta spent $10 billion on metaverse-related technologies in 2021 alone. And in January 2022, Microsoft announced it would buy Activision Blizzard, a gaming company, for $69 billion to strengthen its position in this emerging market. In the first five months of 2022, private equity firms, venture capitalists, and corporations invested over $120 billion in the metaverse more than double the total in 2021. But it's not only tech giants and big corporations that are set to profit from the metaverse. It offers financial opportunities for small, would-be entrepreneurs wherever they are on the planet. Sometimes in places you might not expect. You don't have to be in San Francisco. You don't have to be able to program computer games. Simon Burgess and Max Entwistle are two developers who create virtual experiences on the platform Roblox. Roblox is a huge online virtual world with hundreds of thousands of different experiences, a place to explore 
meet other people and role play. Roblox, which was launched in 2006, had 58 and a half million daily active users in July 2022. At the end of that month, it was valued at $25 billion. There are more than 11 and a half million people developing games for Roblox. Max and Simon are two of the more successful ones. We met in about 2010, I think, both as children. We found each other in like a game on Roblox and just became friends through that, basically. Their game, Sharkbite, developed using the free tools the platform provides, has now been played over a hundred million times. And it nets these recent graduates an income of around one million dollars a year. I remember I was on the plane to Frankfurt in Germany at the time, um, and I just saw the numbers in the game going up and up, seeing more players joining the game. And I was just in absolute awe. It's, it's completely redirected my life. Before I joined Roblox, I never wanted to be a game developer. I didn't think it could be possible. The shark's currently taking out the back of the boat. I'll save you. Escape. Jump out. I'm gonna try and save you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. I got you. Roblox has its own currency called Robux, which users can buy with real money. It may look like simple games with retro style graphics, but this platform is a torchbearer for the metaverse. Its creators promise ultra immersive virtual experiences that digitally mirror those in the real world. Many people think Roblox is a gaming company. We are not. We are a technology platform that allows for people of all ages to be able to create and develop experiences born out of their own imagination and publish it out on our platform and then we share it out with millions. The experience itself is much of what we imagine the metaverse to be. Tens of millions of different interconnected virtual worlds, all seamlessly integrated with who you are, how you communicate, your payment systems, your virtual purchases. The metaverse is already second nature for children across the world. Three out of four Americans aged between nine and 12 use Roblox. As do half of 10 year olds in Britain. With that kind of popularity, the platform has caught the attention of major global brands never say exactly this is when a technology went mainstream or proliferated, but at least for Generation Z and Alpha, it certainly appears to be. The metaverse has found its place in the cultural zeitgeist, even if nobody knows what its final state will look like. I, I feel like you could ask a million developers what the metaverse is and everyone would have a different definition. We're still coming to grasp with the concept of it and that um, it's got a long way to go. Only a very small portion of the canvas has been painted so far. The metaverse is starting to offer opportunities to a multitude of industries and new ways to tackle pressing, even deadly challenges. A state of emergency has descended into chaos. This normal looking plane has some extraordinary technology on board developed by Lockheed Martin. As it flies above the Colorado mountains, the plane is digitally mapping the wildfires that rage below, and it's changing how these types of fires are fought. Lockheed Martin recognizes the impact that wildfires in particular are having on our lives, on our economies, and on the climate. There are helicopters coming in and planes dropping water every few minutes. So the capability that we're maturing is called Cognitive Mission Manager, or CMM. As the fire is spreading, we're able to apply artificial intelligence to predict the fire front behavior. And our goal is to have a 3D visualization available to those decision makers, to those folks that are deciding how to suppress the fire, so they can do so quickly and efficiently. The project uses NVIDIA's Omniverse platform, it's a tool that can create a precise digital version of something that exists in the real world, known as a digital twin. Digital twins are a true-to-reality simulation of a virtual environment to the physical environment. 
You can think of it as two parts of a journey. The creation of things, whether they're buildings, factories, products, scenarios, worlds, etc. And then the operation of those things in a digital twin concept. The way to think of it really is kind of like the operating system for the metaverse. NVIDIA was founded in 1993 and for the first 20 years made the tech that helped usher in the 3D revolution in gaming. Its microchips are suited to powering the hardware and software needed to create the increasingly sophisticated simulations of the metaverse. As a result, NVIDIA's chips are up. This will be the first $1 trillion semiconductor uh, company. The company's market value increased from just under $18 billion in January 2016 to just over $454 billion in July 2022 with revenues growing by nearly 536%. NVIDIA is now building Earth 2, a supercomputer that is creating a digital twin of the weather across the planet. The ability to predict the climate decades in advance could be crucial in adapting to the impacts of climate change. But that's only just the start. The metaverse is also set to transform manufacturing across a range of industries, Amazon, Siemens, and BMW are among the big companies that are using digital twin technologies to recreate their processes down to the smallest detail. The factory of the future is gonna be more efficient, it's gonna be safer, it's gonna be higher degree of productivity. You can understand how parts need to come in and be moved around. You can do other things like training the robots in those virtual factories before you commit to them in the physical sense. We're starting to see digital twins, not just of a single environment, but multiple environments, large scale environments, daisy chained together in a simulation, creating a digital twin, not just of a thing or a place, but space itself. But there is a potential problem. As yet, the metaverse lacks an agreed standard for connecting multiple virtual worlds. Something like the HTML protocol an agreed standard that defines the appearance and behavior of pages on the web. When we think about the metaverse as a 3D elevation of the internet, we require the same sorts of structures, new standards for 3D information, new hierarchies that allow one virtual world to know that another exists to then communicate and safely, securely, and consistently share information. But almost none of that exists today. The race is on to develop the metaverse's equivalent of HTML. The thing that makes the metaverse so impactful for everyone is the seamless ability to go from virtual world to virtual world in much the same way today we go from website to website. Doesn't matter the device, the browser, etc. Once again, it's Hollywood that is making the running. Pixar needed a way for its animators to collaborate effectively despite working in different studios and often with different tools. So it developed its own software called Universal Scene Description, or USD. In 2016, USD was made open source, free for anyone to use. It's still early stages, and it remains to be seen whether USD will become the universal protocol of the metaverse. We saw this as the potential to be the HTML of 3D as we move forward into a 3D-centric web. So now everybody has a common way of describing their 3D environment and you know companies are working together to advance the format like we did with HTML. As some companies focus on wiring up the metaverse, others are busy developing devices to access it and turn science fiction into real commercial opportunity. There's nowhere left to go except the Oasis. Headsets which can superimpose computer-generated imagery on the real world, so-called augmented reality, are opening ever more diverse applications for the metaverse. We've got an exclusive look at one of the military's latest investments. It's a futuristic combat goggles that give soldiers a brand new way to see the battlefield. In 2020, Microsoft agreed to supply the U.S. military with AR technology in a deal that could be worth $22 billion over 10 years. 
Not only can soldiers see in the dark, but they can see through smoke and even peek around corners. New extended or mixed reality devices are essential to some functions, enriching our experience in the metaverse and bringing it into more forms. Augmented reality devices are enabling metaverse technologies to make a real difference to how vital services such as medical care are delivered. This is our consent form for the procedure. Here at Johns Hopkins University in America, using AR devices in surgery is rapidly becoming routine. We're going to be using a new augmented reality guided computer system that's mounted on a headset. Professor Tim Witham is a pioneering surgeon who now uses augmented reality to help perform spinal surgery. The, the first procedure that we performed with this technology involved a, a woman in her uh, 70s who had been suffering for years from low back pain. During the surgery, a marker is inserted into the patient's spine. A CAT scan then creates an image of the spine in relation to the marker. The data is then transferred to the augmented reality headset. While I'm looking inside of the patient and putting the screw in, I see a heads-up display that has the computerized image that shows exactly where the screw is going. It's almost like a GPS system. The augmented reality allows Professor Witham to perform the surgery with a consistent accuracy that was previously hard to achieve. I've subsequently done about 100 cases and uh, we've published data on our uh, accuracy or success rate if you will and we've found that the uh, device is about 98 percent accurate in uh, the placement of uh, spinal uh, instrumentation or implants into the spine. It was very rewarding to be able to see the development of this new technology and then be able to utilize it uh, in real clinical use. The metaverse is already starting to offer glimpses of its potential to drive change and to shape how we behave in profound ways. I find it very hard to predict what the real market opportunity will be. The, the one thing that I know for sure is that these new technologies uh, will lead to new behaviors and those new behaviors will unlock markets that I can't predict. But as the metaverse grows, so do the challenges. Intel estimates that we need a nearly thousand factor improvement in average computing power, plus myriad more computing devices to begin with. And for all its promise to transform how companies and people operate, the metaverse is likely to share the pitfalls of the real world. One thing seems certain, the idea that the real world is limited to what is physically present nearby will seem increasingly bizarre. I like to talk about the metaverse as more than just a tech wave, but a societal one, a multi-trillion dollar economic opportunity that will transform nearly every country, industry, and person's life globally. Hello, I'm Tom Standage, Deputy Editor at The Economist. If you'd like to... You're muted, Dom. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so this is today's uh, video and uh, the information about how uh, Metaverse, um, yeah, the explanation, and I find this is probably so far the, the best and the very, you know, um, inclusive of different thoughts, and it has also open-ended, right? Uh, it says that, um, yeah, because of the technology, it will change a lot of different behaviors, and um, also create new ways of using, you know, spatial computing. So yeah, so um, if you have any thoughts, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, share what you see. And uh, maybe, you know, if you have any new, new insights, feel free to, uh, yeah, unmute yourself and share your thoughts. Yeah. I think it was a great video. And I think one of the things that it illustrates, and my motivation is not to define the metaverse, which to me is just the latest catchphrase.
to describe what's going on in technology. Um, I think what the video illustrates so well is that all of this technology has been developed on sort of a continuum. Um, I was just watching a documentary about George Lucas and Star Wars, and uh, he was a pioneer in developing uh, green screen technology uh, when he was making the Star Wars movies. And so a lot of times they would work on some scene and the actors really wouldn't know what the scene looked like. They're just standing in front of a green screen and uh, trying to sort of pretend about what's around them. And uh, he said, well, well, we'll worry about that. We'll deal with that in post-production. And so, you know, they would shoot the scene. Uh, he would actually book the studio for like three years. And um, so at any time, if they needed to go in and reshoot something or get additional footage, they could bring the actors into the studio and do that. Uh, so he was doing it with green screen a long time ago with Mandalorian, uh, which was mentioned in the video and which Don mentioned. They're you know, using a live uh, video background now instead of just a green screen uh, in order to shoot some of these things. But even still, they have to go in and post-production and fix things up. So what I'm mainly interested in, I'm a technology developer. That's what I've done throughout my career. I'm mainly interested in where is this going? What's coming up? What new technologies are coming up next? And I think the, the next injection of new technology that we're about to see uh, at least in court, uh, according to rumors in the news, is uh, perhaps in January we'll see Apple uh, announce its new headset, which is going to be pretty extensive, and uh, it's going to compete with the Quest Pro, and um, they're hiring developers right now to develop content for it. And um, they finished their reality OS, uh, which is sort of the foundation on which these developers are going to be working. And uh, so what they're interested in, which is interesting, which is sort of along with my interest, is they're going to be developing content in stereo 3D, meaning that instead of having a 3D model that, that both of your eyes look at in the same way. So right now, like in, if you're using one of the Quest headsets, you're looking at a lot of material where the same image is piped to both eyes and it's a rendering of a 3D model, but it's the same image piped to both eyes. Whereas in reality, you have two eyes and each of them sees a slightly different version of the scene that allows you to perce perceive depth directly. That's what Apple's gonna target. They're gonna be having stereo vision where instead of both eyes seeing the same image, they're going to see two images in stereo. So you have a slightly different image in each eye, which gives you parallax, which allows you to perceive 3D directly. And that's been one of my areas of research, areas of interest, is that stereo vision. And uh, so that's what Apple's going to be focusing on. They're going to be focusing on delivering content that's in stereo 3D and perhaps announcing it in January, and perhaps it hitting the market with their headset in March. Uh, so I think that's going to be a very interesting development. Like I said, I think this is a continuum of technology development that's been going on for a long time, and um, that may be the next step in that continuum. So that's my take. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I think uh, before uh, we were talking about AR or VR, right there, I remember back in 2018, ARs, you know, investor invest AR first time ex exceeding uh, VR. So before it was VR, people think about, oh, VR because of a game, right? Uh, Oculus, right? Uh, and later on, AR, because of, uh, you know, uh, iOS, they have, you know, some AR kit, right? So AR start, you know, getting bigger. And now, you know, AR, VR, people start thinking about, wow, what types of technology is better to, uh, you know, for, for people to use or enhance people's, uh, you know, uh, life, right? Um, yeah, so I think at the end of the video, it talks about AR glass, right? I think AR can really, if you see mixed reality, it not only can do VR and also can do AR and, you know, 
can um, really helps um, you know us to see the information on top of the current stuff and also you know doing a lot of things that beyond our world right so yeah I think maybe AR plus or mixed reality has that um, and uh, I remember in AWE some people ask me like why there's no principles for the design for AR, VR, MR, right? There's no principle because if you are a UX, UI designer, you will see like, oh, there's a principle for app design, web design, right? Uh, and I said, the, the hardware is not even set, right? If the hardware is not set, and how can software build on top of it and have a discipline about it? So this is a very new area. And uh, it's great that, you know, we are, working on this area and uh, we are defining the rules. So, which is very exciting because if you work for traditional, you know, app or web, it's pretty sad, right? And you just follow the rules, right? And you read a bunch of books. But now if you work for this area, you are the person who are defining the rules and you are the person who write the books, who create content. So I feel pretty proud that I think this is the first time. I know a lot of people, they have, you know, yeah, like previously we have uh, audience. Um, he said that, oh, I've been to, you know, dot uh, com, right? Uh, a lot of, um, you know, technology race up and down. And I think this is kind of my first time to see, you know, something that is going to, 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 to become, you know, wildly accept. Uh, and I am also working in this area, so I feel really excited. Okay, so any other thoughts? I, I think one thing that's worth mentioning is the limitation of VR hmm. is that you put this headset on and you can't hmm. do anything else besides the VR. Hmm. And I think in the long run, that is not an acceptable solution to the mass market. I think in the long run, you know, that may be okay for gaming and, and so forth, but in the long hmm. run, uh, the, what you, there's a criteria that you need to meet. And that is if somebody is sitting at home at, in the evening watching TV, they want to look at their social media and they want to be able to do that with whatever this new stuff is. And I think that means that what's going to be the most successful in the long run is augmented reality. Uh, so if you have like, something approaching uh, sunglasses that you're wearing while you're sitting on the couch watching TV and trying to go through your social media, uh, that augmented reality is compatible with all of those activities. Having a VR headset on your head, just doing VR is not. So um, I think for that reason, AR is going to uh, take over in the end. And you'll be able to uh, use it while you're going about your everyday activities. I think the things that you would normally check on your phone instead of having to drag your phone out of your pocket to look at the display will be on the display of the AR glasses. And uh, so I think that's the way things are going. I think that's what will succeed in the long run. So yeah. that's my take on that. Yeah, I think I totally agree because you see VR, right? It's cover the entire sense. So which means it's more uncomfortable than AR glass, right? AR glass, if you see that right now, there are a bunch of smart glasses and they usually use the audio command, right? Uh, I I try both AR and it's uh, 360 special uh, augmented, uh, but it's more like audio augmented. And I, I have... Um, Ray-Ban, Facebook smart uh, glass, and which allows me to go out, right? And I can say, hey, Facebook, uh, take a photo, right? Or take a video and it will record a short clips into the little app called Facebook View. And I can, you know, create a montage of, of, of today that I go out and, you know, all those like clips and it will automatically generate uh, a template for me. Uh, and I can, it's ready for me to post on the social media. So I think there's always a scenarios that um, how we can, you know, um, you know, create or 
how we can enhance our life, right? And are those in production? Are those oh, in production? it's already it's already there. I mean, yeah, it's called Ray Ban Smart Glass and Facebook. I mean, I I, I took a bunch of shots and used the you know uh, Facebook view, and then I published some uh, you know stories or some little clips. Uh, those are really it's already out there and nothing nothing secret. And you can I think it's very similar to Snap Snapchat. What's, what's the price? What's the price on those? Ah, oh, I think it's three hundred something, four hundred something. Ray Ban, okay. Ray Ban Smart Glasses. I buy the um, oh wow, thirty percent off. Friday. This is great. This is great. I mean, if you want to buy, it's thirty percent off. Yeah. So I have one of those, and they have video, they have you know this right, uh, camera, and uh, instead. It, it, there's a, you know, a, kind of like a button, right? You can see this button. You can have short press and it has the, you know, snap, like taking taking photos. And if you long press, it will record videos. And it's usually like a 20 seconds, 15 seconds. I forgot, but it's a short clip videos. And uh, you can use voice command. So, so it's just one camera or two cameras? Ah. Uh, I think two cameras, you see, two cameras. Okay. So yes. you can do 3D stereo. Yeah, right. And uh, those, this is, yeah, go ahead. Are those just for Facebook, Facebook or, or are there other applications for those that are active right now? Um, you need to download uh, an app called Facebook View, right? Oh, okay. And that you can pair up your smart glass to that view thing. So once you, you know, travel back or something and, uh, you open it and uh, there's a, you know, I don't know, Bluetooth uh, kind of sync and whatever recorded inside your glass, it will kind of auto sync to that. And there are some template you can just click and it will auto generate something like, oh, this is my today's, uh, you know, journey or something. So it's kind of like a video journey becomes your class. Instead of you take a fall and trying to record, you know, your travel, your treats, and it has, you know, the sunglass. So, However, yeah, go ahead. Uh, there's no display of data in those glasses. It's strictly recording. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I think uh, Apple is doing something very similar to more like a Magic Leap, right? They have like a display, right? Major League has display as well. So um, the Ray-Ban one is just recording. It's a camera on your, uh, you know, glass, and it records your day, and it's easy for you to share um, your, you know, some videos, photos, clips using voice command um, share to your social media. But this one, I think Apple's, um, you know, upcoming glass is something that you can. Uh, you know, interact. It's more like a sci-fi, sci-fi movies. And also Magic Leap. I think Magic Leap has something very similar, but, you know, um, right now it's all very chunky, he heavy, and really expensive. I think Magic Leap is at least 25,000, something like that. Wow. And uh, Apple is probably two, 3,000. If you see this, I, I just saw the- Well, yeah, the for price. the headset. The, yeah. the AR glasses that you're seeing, the more lightweight glasses, those are probably, uh, the headset is probably 2023. The AR glasses, the lighter glasses are probably 2024, 2025. Yeah. So, yeah. So I would say that it still requires a lot of technology, power, hardware, infrastructure back then um, to in order for this to operate. And imagine if you want something really powerful and very small, in, must generate a lot of heat, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, so when I wear Magic Leap, I just feel like my my head is burning and I put that little, you know, um, I don't know, CPU or something uh, I put on a, on my pocket and I feel like my my legs feel burned. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's really hot, um, the, the heat, yeah. That's supposedly one of the reasons why Apple's headset has been delayed for so long that they yeah. just could not cool off the processor in the headset. Uh, so, yeah. so they've gotten to the point now where they can do that. 
Mm. Uh, I think one of the interesting things about these Ray-Ban glasses mm -hmm. is that they overcome one of the problems that Google Glass had. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Google came out with something similar to this many years ago, but the problem was that they were really weird looking. Mm -hmm. And uh, people knew that, they're, that they had the capability to record, that they had a camera in them. And so when you walked around with the Google Glass and, and and people saw you, they were creeped out because they thought, mm. hey, this person could be recording me right now without my knowledge. And yeah. they didn't like that. So that led to the downfall of Google Glass. But these clearly are glasses that look more like normal glasses. If you know what you're looking for, you, you'd notice the little cameras, but um, uh, that's interesting. I use, you know, Ray-Ban and I was, I went to, you know, Habit and bought Hamburger, right? And I was like a, you know, uh, film the entire process, nobody recognized it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, people look at me like I'm a normal person. But if I wear, imagine like a HoloLens, right? Or a Magic Leap, people already kind of sense, oh, you're recording me, right? So those glasses looks really normal. And also, I wouldn't say it's light because, you know, um, it still have heavy weight because you see like all those, right? Those are really heavy. Yeah. And yeah, because imagine those are, you know, a lot of things is building in there. So it's not definitely not um, lightweight, but compared with, you know, that heavy VR thing, uh, it's already pretty good. But uh, for Ray-Ban, the smart glass, there is no, uh, currently there's no display. Think about that in the future. There might be, right? Uh, look at Apple, right? So, so I would say that we need a lot of infrastructure in both chips and also, you know, syncing, right? The 5G, right? Or, you know, I don't know, 6G in the future, something that even faster or make, um, allows the, the you know, hardware um, head mount uh, device. Um, can be a little lighter uh, so the customer can feel much better when wearing it. Right now, it's just uh, too expensive. It's still early stage. I mean, it's oh. not as early as we thought, but, you know, um, it, it is probably around 10, 20 years that this types of stuff start, you know, getting into our lives, right? But it might take another five to 10 years for everybody to accept it, right? So yeah, so we are still, you know, uh, in the process of doing it and uh, we we learn and we grow with all the technology. And uh, yeah, before you see Metaverse, it's just, I, I still remember back in 2015 or 16, I was, I, I was really interested in VR, but uh, people just said that, oh, VR is never happening. It's just a bubble, another bubble, right? But you see like VR, um, v VR, AR, right? It's blurring, right? Uh, blossom and uh, yeah. And I think AR glass might be a really good compromise between, you know, the totally fake virtual world uh, and, uh, you know, the physical world, right? We all know that physical world, there are a lot of limitations and, uh, you know, by seeing the extra data, for example, like the simulation, digital twins, and we can predict and do a better judgment, right? For example, the doctors, they can, uh, the doctors can see more data about the patient so they can do a better judgment, right? Good. So yeah, go ahead. The Facebook app that you're using, uh, does that make use of the data from both cameras or just one? I really don't know, but uh, it, yeah, I mean, I, I'm opening that um, uh, thing and uh, yeah, interesting. I think it will catch up wider angle. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of a panoramic type of thing. Yeah, because when I see that, I can see actually it, it records more than uh, just, you know, the, the, you know, the, just one camera, maybe something very similar to, you know, iPhone, right? They have like a, a, a better, bigger view uh, with more uh, cameras. So mm -hmm. I, I I think this is a pretty good technology and everyone is still learning and improving it. 
And as time goes by, I believe like in the future that um, the technology will do us good because think about 20 years ago, right? How can we, you know, work from home, right? Think about work from home. It's kind of something that is not possible thing, but you see like right now, almost a lot of people work from home and, you know, start connecting. Uh, you, you see, like right now we are an event, but we can do virtually, right? So in the future, I believe the, the technology will make education, um, you know, more um, equal, right? Um, and uh, a lot of stuff will be more open or the, the gatekeeper will be, you know, eliminate. So it will be more like, for example, yeah, like everything will be easier to get to the information, right? So there will be a lot of problems as well, but uh, I think uh, all those technologies, if we kind of, yeah, use it in a good way, then it will definitely help us. And I think AR might be a good way um, to, you know, to rock, yeah. Yeah, any thoughts? Anyone wanna unmute themselves? Um. Very fascinating stuff, and I had a question about the metaverse in terms of um how is it being run. I I'm actually want to ask about what are the advancements for our city development? Like we talk about VR glasses and AR glasses. What are like? I know uh, Oculus. I own one that they have hands features and everything. It's not always the sharpest thing, but what are the advancements for like? kind of VR gloves to actually make 3D world grabbable, you know, uh, to interact with it. What are the inventions of that, do you know? Uh, yeah. Um, you got experience with that. Oh, you mean like, uh, how can we grab something in AR glass, right? Something like that. Eden, I think your signal sometimes is a little, um, I don't know, there are some echoes. Uh, so yeah, do you wanna, it, it, did, did, I, did, did I repeat your question right? Uh, which you want to have AR glass to have the interaction with the human beings instead of just okay. a viewport. Is that what your question is? Um, not, it's not so much AR glasses. I haven't actually had a chance to interact with any of them, but um, I was more going with the with the Oculus VR. Um, there are some inventions happening around uh, interactive gloves. You know, things so we could actually grab things in the VR world instead of using controllers. How is that advancement? Because I think if anything's gonna be an upgrade for people to wanting to use it is to have it a more natural grabbing feeling. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, for, 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 for the hand, right? There are like, have you tried, uh, you know, there's a super giant glove. Uh, it was in AWE uh, two times uh, last year and this year. And when your hand grabbing and it has a simulator, like an elect electronic simulator and kind of make you feel the fur of the, the cat or the water dripping. Yeah, but I can tell you that uh, it's all the same simulation. It's like, you know, being elect, some elect electricity is like happening here and there. I wouldn't feel, I, I couldn't feel that a difference between touching uh, cat's fur versus something drip the water dribble um, you know because I think humans touch sense is very delicate right it's so hard to use one type of you know the ele ele electricity to kind of see stimulate and trying to mimic all the different senses so they are trying and it's really giant and last time when I try I asked the founder how much is the glove and he said probably at least 9,000 per pair, right? You see, it's super chunky, super giant, and uh, the, the feeling is not there yet, and it's extremely expensive, and you need to wear a super big pack 
the computer CPU or you know the entire computer on your back in order to feel uh, that thing and it's not even you know there yet right so um, I think we are trying it right we are trying to um, uh, make the sense more more tailored to human beings however I think those are still in the kind of early development and you know like there there are some startups trying to do the sense right you smell something and for example if you go to a rose garden in vr and you can smell the rose right and um, a developer can program um, the sense using chips right and kind of uh, stimulate and producing some makes sense according to your uh, virtual reality all those stuff is still under production and as far as touch this part as far as i know that glove thing and also there's another face mask which you know when you play like the boxing game it will punch your face if you know if someone punch your face i mean <laughs> It, okay, it, I would it, like to see that but anyways, um, thank you. I just, I'm, I'm. Let me get outside for a moment. I, I'm thinking about it the more theater, theater side of things, more like um, the sensory would be the biggest cornerstone of how to bring VR and AR into a bigger highlight. Because just like how the first movie theaters were, then they brought movies to home and then they brought phone movies to a phone and therefore therefore um so if you could put it like in very audio visual experience in a dark room where you could uh, like put themselves in like an outside of the atmosphere make them smell make them feel little droplets and everything i think that's that's the best form of entertainment that's the way i'm coming at it and i'm looking at it that way thank you yeah another technology that's under development is to use like a wrist strap uh, and you could put this in something like the apple watch for example that is able to sense what you're doing with your hand what your fingers are doing and so forth and so that may be another type of uh hand input device um another thing that I've seen demonstrated in videos is um, a system that fits, like if you're wearing one of these headsets, it fits on the bottom of the headset and um, it will use ultrasound to stimulate uh, your touch sensing around your mouth. So you might feel things on your lips, on your tongue, uh, you might feel the wind blowing, things like that. Uh, so that's just another one of those technologies that's under development. Yeah, and I, I want to, I want to like, um, think, I'm now I'm thinking about it. Like, where can this be profitable other than buying it in your own home? And then, just like um, little niches of unique themes that you could actually purchase them and actually make a profit of making your own visual, uh, uh, VR kind of space and have people enjoy the themes. Yeah. Well, I think as a user interface, um, this stuff can be valuable. I think that wrist strap type of mechanism could end up being uh, a popular user interface for essentially what would be your phone. So the way I look at it is you'll, you're walking down the street. <clears throat> you're walking down the street instead of having to pull your phone out of your pocket, you see, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the data that you would normally see on your phone, you're seeing in the AR glasses. And instead of pulling out the phone and, and touching the, the screen and so forth as your user interface, you could be wiggling around your fingers um, and this wrist strap could pick that up and that could be your way of, you know, touching the user interface of the phone so that you don't have to, again, actually pull the phone out and take a look at it. And that could be, you know, that could be a lot of your user interface for your computer and so forth. Um, so uh, I, I think you, you know, that would be an area where that could make money as in a sort of a standard user interface to these things. It's more convenient than uh, dealing with a phone. Yeah, I think there are a lot of, you know, uh, ways that we can definitely use it right and then we are still uh, trying to 
do different scenarios and see which one that works. For example, like um, cryptocurrency, right? Um, you know, FTX or, you know, the, 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 that one just, which just go bankruptcy, that one. The interesting thing is that um, before I believe in cryptocurrency and I bought like Ethereum a lot, but uh, they just keep going down. And I was like, hey, all the, you know, so-called DAO or, um, you know, WebXR, you know, so-called, you know, all, all those good metaverse platform online, uh, web-based metaverse platform, they all use Ethereum. Ethereum is supposed to go up, right? But the interesting thing is that sometimes we think, oh, this is a good scenario, but, um, you know, we think like, oh, if we can govern ourselves, we don't need government, right? And we don't need third party. We don't need bank to, 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 you know, to earn the extra, you know, charging, just be the third person, right? Uh, do the transaction and the world will be better, right? That's our assumption. But when it put to the practice, right? People start taking advantage of it, right? That um, same, or I, I forgot his name, but the founder of FTX, right? He, he kind of took a lot of money out of investors or a, a lot of people's money and pay off his girlfriend's debt, right? And now, you know, they live a really good life and file the bankruptcy and kind of shock everybody, right? Because we thought that blockchain is so secure, right? But, you know, people are greedy, right? People who create that entire, you know, thing can, you know, also play the game, right? Uh, so, so, I mean, the technology itself is not good or bad. It's the people, right? So how can we prevent uh, you know, people take advantage of it, right? So I, I would say, yeah, go ahead. I think there's a way, and that is um, hmm. in order to use cryptocurrencies, you have to have trust and confidence in them. Without that, you know, hmm. nobody's going to buy them. Hmm. And so um, one of the problems with FTX was hmm. that it's an offshore company and it was not transparent, didn't even have a hmm. board of directors. And so uh, there's a... There's something called trust, but verify. And so if you're going to have trust in these cryptocurrencies, you're going to have to be able to verify their legitimacy. And in order to do that, the companies themselves have to have transparency. You have to be able to look at how they're operating behind the scenes to make sure that there's not some kind of funny business going on. And you just didn't have that with FTX. Uh, because it was offshore, there was not much in the way of regulation. And um, you couldn't tell what the heck they were doing behind the scenes. And that's where the problems were. And so um, there's gonna be a lot of ripple effects from FTX because not only were they invested in a bunch of companies, but a lot of big companies invested in them. And so there's there's gonna be a lot of fallout from, from that bankruptcy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think because, you know, there are a lot of social credibilities on that company. You see like all the celebrities, right? They have, you know, ads for FTX, right? And, uh, you know, all the big investors or a lot of, you know, I don't know, politicians, a lot of people kind of vouch that company. But how can you not like, how can you become so bad and while everyone is saying you are good, right? So how can we even know, like, for example, people who just first time invest or, you know, not have a lot of experience, like the majority of people who will know there are problems about it, right? So it's so hard. And uh, at early stage, there will be a lot of bubbles and burst out, right? Because you see like a lot of things, it's just... Uh, taking advantage of the early stage of the, you know, loose of the low random force, right? So, yeah, any thoughts, comments? Um, I don't much care for starting uh, talking in conspiracy or anything like uh, those conversations. It just goes down to a train for nowhere. And I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying I'm what I'm about to say might sound like it, but... Um, uh, okay, it's it's a pretty good to be in the perspective. Back in the '80s, they had um, Coca-Cola made, made new Coke, and 
people hated it so much that uh, that they brought it back, and the regular taste of Coca Cola uh, never tasted better, in their perspective. Now, the reason why I bring that up is that if the American dollar is not being spent enough during our time, well, make let's make up a new cur- uh, currency and have that fail over and over and over, bring more trust back to the dollar and and that's how it's it's happening right now because Matt Damon did not get paid in crypto. He got paid in cold hard cash. Um and reason why, and reason why I'm uh, going with this is because um there are there have been plenty of wars that have been started to keep the dollar number one and there's no war started to keep crypto down. So I don't think this uh, this thing cryptocurrency is going to be a legitimate uh, for a uh, future thing. I don't think it's going to be. Uh, I, I think it was always meant to just keep failing over and over and over and over for the trust for the dollar to come back to be number one. Because China is definitely not going to be losing its number two spot to a crypto thing in the air. So that's just something that I'm believing about uh, this crypto stuff. Thanks. I, I think there's some legitimacy in what you're saying. And, and I think if you, uh, if you fi- follow the financial reporting and so forth, uh, there's a guy named Jim Cramer on CNBC um, who's sort of a stock guru. And, um, well, he hates cryptocurrency. <laughs> but to me, you know, I'm an engineer. I view cryptocurrency as a random variable. And, and so... Uh, I'm not going to be speculating on it or anything like that. Uh, but um, it's it's one of those speculative investments, just like NFTs. And, uh, you know, people make money off of specular, speculative invest, investments. Um, but it's just I'm, I'm a little too cautious to, to get into that stuff. Yeah, I think Kyle has another question. Kyle, do you want to unmute yourself and talk about your question? Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, no, no, I, I really enjoyed that video. It's really insightful and informative. The, the thing I wanted to find out is any beginner software developer, what type of uh, tech stack can you use to learn to create a mini project? Like I know for Unity, is just one, but y'all can just clarify that on me. What tech stack? for projects or work. In South Africa, we, we still new to AR and VR in the universities and stuff. Yeah? Uh, uh, yeah. Anyone can answer the question? Yeah, I think Unity is definitely something that, uh, you know, it's free and uh, you download it. And there are so many uh, resources out there, right? Unity. And um, yeah, if you want to do some AR social media, you can use Lens Studio for Snapchat or Spark AR for Facebook, right? Lens. Oh, is it um, all free, all open source? Yeah, those are open, open source. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, those uh, two. Uh, Lin- okay, cool. There's Unreal Engine as well, which is sort yeah. of a competitor to Unity. It doesn't, cool. apparently, the latest sure. versions of it don't run as well on the Mac, but um, uh, that's that's another one of those things. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Uh, just repeat those two you mentioned, don't it, again? Mm-hmm. Oh, Lens Studio, yeah, Andrew, Lens, yeah, Lens Studio and Spark AR. Uh, actually, I have YouTube channel oh, and yeah. I have some okay. um, I, I have some tutorials um, back in 2020. If you kind of want to take a yeah, look, cool. no, uh, definitely. Let me have see. A look. No, because Spark this AR. is this is great for developing. I mean, you know, so maybe for medical or cancer research, you know, that's I think in the future, yeah, this will be really helpful uh, for like an MRI scan or um, what's that other machine called? Um, MRI, and you get the other one like ultrasound and stuff. I mean, this technology would be really good. Yeah, yeah. but uh, no, no, I really enjoyed the presentation. Yeah, I, I think today is like uh, we are talking about like a metaverse and also mm. a little bit about what will be look like, what will, you know, this types of technology will look like in the future. And we'll also mention a lot of like different topics. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm happy cool, cool. 
yeah so yeah so hopefully see you guys you know next week and yeah. thank you so no, much for joining. yeah no, thank you everyone thank you, you have a good yeah. night today thank you <laughs> thank you yeah everyone. thank you mm, bye bye cheers bye, bye.